Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. It might be party season, but President Putin is extremely unhappy about a party that took place recently in Moscow. A star-studded, almost naked party at a Moscow nightclub has provoked an unusually swift and powerful backlash. The theme of the party was nearly naked. Guests obliged, arriving in lingerie, mesh and jewels, dancing under golden confetti. Blogger Anastasia Ivaliva organized the party in the heart of Moscow's nightclub district on December 21st. Partygoers showed up half-clothed or with barely anything on, with outfits made of mesh, lingerie and other creative materials to strategically cover limited parts of their body. The event defied President Vladimir Putin's growing calls for a socially conservative society. He recently outlawed LGBTQ activism while telling Russians to embrace traditional values and have eight or more children. Internal criticism has mounted about how how a party of this nature could go ahead as Russians continue fighting on the front lines in Ukraine. Orthodox church officials, pro-war activists and pro-Kremlin lawmakers have all denounced the scantily clad partygoers. Attendees are now facing legal action. A video clip of Putin's spokesperson listening to an explanation from one of the stars who attended has been circulating online. And Russian media reported that troops fighting in Ukraine were among the first to complain after seeing the footage. Они, сука, носят на жопе 23 миллиона. И они хвалятся этим. Это вообще как понимать? Товарищ Путин, товарищ Шойгу, это как понимать? А? Мы что за этих пи***, сука, сука, в окопах сидим, Мы вот за этих что там воюем, the host, a well-known blogger in Russia, is now facing a multi-million dollar class action for moral suffering. So as you've just seen, the footage of this almost naked party spread rapidly, not just in Russia, but also to the front line in Ukraine and caused a severe backlash among some of the people who've been forced to go and fight in that war. And as a direct result of that backlash, President Putin is now clamping down, not just on this party, but potentially on the freedom of speech and other rights within Russia. So in today's episode, I'll share with you the full video that was posted by the Russian soldier on Russian social media. And this has gone viral. Lots of people have seen it, which has really forced President Putin into taking some action swiftly, particularly as his goddaughter was identified by the soldier as attending the party. So we'll have a look at her involvement. And unfortunately, she was pictured with one of the most outrageous attendees who went to the party wearing only a sock and it wasn't on his foot. We'll then talk about what's happening to the organizer of this party, who's a very high profile blogger in Russia. We'll then go on to have a look at what the implications for the other attendees of this party have been and what their response has been on social media. And then finally today I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the wider implications of this story are for the Russian population. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that supported the channel. If you've sent me a YouTube super thanks or bought me a coffee or signed up as a patron or a member, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Troops fighting in Ukraine were among the first to complain after seeing the footage. И что бы нам хотелось сказать этой власти? Вы посмотрите, какие ублюдки, когда мы там воюем, да, когда мы гнием в окопах, они, сука, носят на жопе 23 миллиона. И они хвалятся этим. Это вообще как понимать? Товарищ Путин, товарищ Шойгу, это как понимать? А? Мы что за этих пи***, сука, сука, в окопах сидим, Вы нам ответьте, когда у нас конец срока. У зеков есть конец срока. Вы милуете с убийц, насильников и так далее. Мы уже полтора года здесь с мышами в окопах гнием. Когда все сука это закончится, Путин. Где наша сука армия, про которую вы нам столько лет сука? Мы вот за этих что ли там воюем. 
Blogger and party organizer Anastasia Evliva attended wearing jewelry worth more than $250,000 at a time when many Russians are struggling to get by. In a previous video, Evliva claimed the event was an opportunity to showcase photos created during her tenure as the chief editor of the now defunct Russian edition of Playboy. The anger is mainly directed at the host of the party, blogger Anastasia Evlieva. She faces a lawsuit demanding that she pay nearly 10 million euros to an organization supporting the conflict in Ukraine. Almost immediately after the backlash started to appear about this party, the organizer posted an apology on Instagram. And this apology was a relatively relaxed general apology in which she said she would donate the proceeds of the second day of the party to charity. If Leva apologised via her Instagram page, posting a 21-minute video asking for forgiveness and a second chance. The risk that someone would think of behaving this way wasn't foreseen and built into the planning of the event. I apologise to everyone, to society and to my guests, who unwittingly became participants in everything. So I think in normal circumstances, that apology would have been sufficient and everybody would have moved on. But of course, the fact that this party was linked to what's happening in Ukraine, the soldiers over there are seen as being suffering and giving up their freedom to fight for the cause of the Russian people. And so the contrast with this party was very stark at this time of year. And the furore and the backlash gathered pace. And as a result, Anastasia Oliva posted another apology. And it's really interesting to note that the tone of this apology is extremely different to the first one. The second video posted by Anastasia Oliva is very different in terms of its tone. In this one, she states that she should be grateful to Russia and not have flown off the handle and apologizes profusely for her part in organizing the party and goes on to apologize for the hurt that she's caused by organizing this party. And then in a bizarre twist, she says that Russia can forgive and asks everybody for a second chance and then mentions that public execution in Russia has never been cancelled and says that she will not dodge her punishment and is ready for any outcome, which implies that she believes that public execution is a potential punishment that she could be facing, which is a bizarre thing for somebody who's very high profile and posting regularly on social media in Russia to say. So I think the takeaway from that second apology is that firstly, we've got an individual here who realizes that they've made a massive mistake, that their career is going down the toilet. But not just that, it does look like somebody has had a word with her and put the fear of God into that individual. And she's now talking about the fact that she could be potentially facing the death penalty. Now, I don't think realistically that she is facing the death penalty, but in that video, you could see that she is very concerned about her future. She has since been axed as one of the public faces of cell network MTS. Tax authorities have opened an investigation that carries a potential five-year prison term, and a Moscow court has accepted a lawsuit demanding she pay out nearly $11 million for, quote, moral suffering. This rapper, known as Vasio, wore nothing more than a sock and not on his foot. But the backlash was swift. He was sentenced to 15 days in prison for homosexual propaganda and hooliganism, now forbidden under the LGBTQ plus propaganda law, which was passed by the Supreme Court in November. The rapper Vasio has posted a public apology on social media, stating that he does not support LGBT and does not want to make any propaganda about this. He goes on to apologize for offending the feelings of other people and being a participant in such a terrible video at such a difficult time for Russia as a result of the war in Ukraine. And it would appear from his very uncomfortable stance in this video, there is a strong likelihood that he was directed to say this either by his management or potentially the Russian authorities. One of the highest profile guests at the Almost Naked party was Kasina Subchek, a TV presenter and liberal Russian presidential candidate in 2018, who's considered to be President Putin's goddaughter after he attended her baptism and viewed her father as his political mentor. 
Russian rapper Vasio, who wore only a sock on his genitals, is seen in this photo with the phrase ugly people are scared of beauty written on his back. Beside him is Ksenia Sabchak, a renowned journalist and former candidate in the 2018 presidential election. So obviously from Kenzie Subject's perspective, attending this party has been a horrible embarrassment. But there are now real implications for her because as a result of the high profile nature of her attendance and the fact that she was specifically name checked in the video posted on social media by the Russian soldier, it's extremely unlikely that President Putin will want to have any future association with her. And so there are potentially life changing implications from her perspective. A court verdict against the party said the event was aimed at propagating non-traditional sexual relationships. Sponsors of some of Russia's best-known entertainers have torn up their contracts. Wow. Others have had their lucrative state TV airtime or concerts cancelled, and President Vladimir Putin is reported to be unamused. Russian TV channels have been asked to cut out the celebrities' appearance in this year's New Year's Eve programs, a warning from the Kremlin to the art world. It prompted a series of apologies and excuses from the stars in attendance. Pop star Lalita Milyavskaya said on Telegram that the event was an art exhibition. Another pop star, Filip Kirkarov, said he was only at the party for five minutes and insisted he would not betray Russia. There are moments in every person's life when they walk through the wrong door. In these difficult times, heroic times, an artist of my caliber, a national artist, cannot and should not be so irresponsible as to be involved in any events. I am an artist. So that appeared to be a genuine apology from Philippe Kirkorov. However, in this clip, when he meets with President Putin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, he says that he only stayed for five minutes at the party. As soon as he saw that it was an almost naked event, he decided that it wasn't a good idea to stay. However, the footage that we've seen in today's video doesn't really back that story up. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because the end of the year is always party season. It's always good to go and let your hair down. However, in Russia, you need to be careful how much hair you're actually letting down and make sure that you go appropriately dressed to these parties. Now, when Anastasia Oliva organized this party, I'm sure she wasn't expecting anything like this sort of backlash. I'm sure her main thoughts were about how many videos and pictures she could get to post on her Instagram page to increase her number of followers. But unfortunately, from her point of view, the views and followers that she attracted as a result of this party weren't exactly the ones that she wanted. And the public backlash has been quite severe. When President Putin gets involved in your party, that is really a bad thing. Now, I'm not saying that Russians don't want President Putin attending their parties, but I don't think this was his sort of gig. And as we've seen from today's video, the ramifications have actually become quite serious. People have been arrested. There's now a one billion ruble court case coming against the organizer of this party. And lots of celebrities have lost a lot of their contracts and future work. But I think the implications for the Russian people and society are really the bigger issue here because President Putin has said that this was an affront. This was a sexually motivated party and he sees it as being something that needs to be clamped down. And as you saw earlier in the video, the LGBTQ movement has actually now been officially labeled as an extremist organization, which means that that community in Russia can't hold any events. And if you're labeled as being part of the LGBT community, you can be arrested and imprisoned. And we saw the Russian rapper Vasily who was the guy who attended the party in just a sock, stating that it had nothing to do with LGBTQ, even though he was forced to spend 15 days in prison. So although today's video has been a slightly different flavor, a little bit of a more light-hearted look at what's happening in Russia, I think the overall takeaway is actually quite serious. Because what we're seeing is the authorities in Russia continuing to clamp down on freedom of speech and people's right to express themselves. And these issues are being linked directly to what's happening in Ukraine. At the start of today's episode, you saw the video posted by the Russian soldier. 
And the Russian authorities have used that as both a catalyst and a reason to clamp down on everybody that's been involved in this party. And if the war in Ukraine continues to go on, which it's extremely likely to do, it's likely that the Russian authorities will continue using it as a reason and excuse to further clamp down on freedom of speech. So hopefully you found today's slightly different episode useful, informative, thought-provoking and potentially entertaining. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.